Okay folks, today's experiment with the XEE2 Transformer Dual Thief type setup and I've rejigged it again. I'm using the same transformer as in my previous video so the hookup is exactly the same, uh, RE the uh, transformer connections. The transformer model number is RS196-303 so if you google that you'll see the specifications on it. So I won't go through the transformer hookup again today but check my previous video for that. So basically what we've got here is a 100 ohm resistor feeding into a 100k uh, pot. Now that feeds into a 4148 diode which is connected to the base. This is a laser save uh, idea for the dual ringer. Now is what I've done today is I've added a uh, capacitor in parallel with this diode and it's what that's done is uh, it allows me to get high voltage at a lower input voltage uh, and less current draw. So that was quite a big biggie for me today and this configuration is working really well for lighting xenon bulbs. So uh, I'll show you the setup for the Xenon bulb which I've used. So I'm not sure how to actually hook a Xenon bulb up because I've only used them in the past uh, with Slayer uh, exciter type circuits where you just hold them in the vicinity of the exciter and it lights up. So this was a new one for me today so I wasn't sure how to hook it up but this configuration seems to be working quite well. So is what we've got here is the Xenon bulb it has three pins on it. Now, if you connect the HV to one side and the one to the other side from the transformer, this is the transformer, the HV out. So the two outer pins have HV. Now the centre pin are connected to a capacitor and then to one of the outer legs. And this is basically making this bulb light up uh, at a low current draw and low voltages. So it's sparking up a lot sooner than without having this capacitor. This capacitor has changed the whole dynamics of it really. So uh, the capacitor I'm using is a non-polarized ceramic one and it doesn't seem to uh, hold any voltage. So I'm not sure what voltage rating you should need to use but uh, just try it and see what you think. So I'll show you the circuit running now. Okay, I'll just give you a quick overview of the setup we've got here. It's the usual mess of crocodile leads everywhere, but that just makes it easy to change things. And uh, this is how I find stuff. And uh, we've got the xenon bulb glowing away nicely. And uh, you see what I mean? It's got the three prongs on it. The two uh, outer, well, the two outer ones are the HV. The centre and the outside one go to this small capacitor here. And that makes all the difference for the initial spark up of this thing. So uh, that was a good find for me because I'm not sure how to wire these up. So if somebody could let me know, that would be helpful as well. So we've got the uh, the dual thief part of the thing here, which is the transformer. And it looks complicated because it's got so many wires and it's got four inputs and four outputs. But uh, like I said before, check my last video and there's a wiring diagram for that. So uh, we've got the 1.5 AA battery. Uh, drawing 76 milliamps and uh, this transformer I've got it on a heat sink but it's not got hot yet uh, the neon's not flashing because the input voltage is so low and uh, it's drawing hardly anything so there's not a lot of back EMF uh, well not enough to flash the neon now that's the 100 ohm resistor feeding into the 100k pot and that goes round and goes into this 4148 diode with a 100 picofarad capacitor in parallel and this was the big find today because what that's doing is it allows me to use uh, well if that battery was a little bit flat that capacitor would allow the neon to spark up and basically it allows me to uh, turn the variable resistor down so reducing the current draw and the xenon still lights now without that capacitor across there the xenon would have dropped out at a higher level of current draw than it would with the capacitor and uh, that's uh, quite evident on higher voltages as well but if I used a bigger capacitor than 100 picofarad the uh, xenon wouldn't uh, fire up so if you're using a 1.5 volt battery I'd start off with a 100 picofarad cap now I'll up the, uh, the input voltage now and uh, change the capacitor OK, I've changed the power source from a AA battery to a wall adapter and it's running on the 12 volt setting but it's out outputting about uh, 15 to 16 volts. Now the capacitor I'm going to be using, this is a 3700 microfarad uh, electrolytic cap. So it's polarised, so we've got a positive which connects to the uh, anode of the diode and the cathode of the diode connects to the negative of the cap via these jumper leads so it's in parallel. Now it's not actually connected for the first test. The first test I'm going to do is uh, to see when this bulb actually drops out. So I've got the meter in view 
and uh, that's uh, glowing away nicely there on uh, 63 milliamps so I'll turn the uh, potentiometer down and we'll see the uh, current draw decreasing and the bulb going dimmer and we'll see when it actually drops out so it dropped out then at 50 milliamps and it's half lit if I turn it a little bit more it'll go out completely so it's completely out at 40 and I'll just turn it slowly now and see when it starts up So it fires up at 50, so it drops out at 50 and fires up at 50 really. So it's what I'll do now is I'll add this capacitor. So the cap's in parallel now and it's nice and bright there on 53 milliamps. So I'll turn it down now and we'll see when it drops out now. It's still going good at 35 milliamps. I'll turn it a bit more. And the transformer is very quiet. So it dropped out at 33 milliamps. So I'll turn it the other way now and see when it starts up. So it starts up at 33 milliamps as well. So you can see the difference adding a cap across the diode makes in this configuration. So if somebody else could check this with a, uh, an LED bulb, it would be uh, pretty helpful. But uh, it certainly seems to be working quite well in this configuration. Okay, thanks for watching. Okay, I just want to say one last thing about the cap values I've used today. This small one's the 100 picofarad, and this is the uh, 3700 microfarad. Now, you can use this cap uh, for 1.5 volts, all the way up to 16 volts, like uh, I've showed today, if you want. But the bigger the capacitor when they're using higher voltages, the lower the dropout current. So ideally, as the voltages go up, you want to increase the size of the capacitor. But if I tried to use this big one uh, when I was running the circuit on 1.5 volts, basically uh, it wouldn't even start up. So if you're using small voltages, use a lower uh, size cap and higher voltages a larger size cap but just try what you've got because everybody's setups are going to be different and find out what works best for you okay thanks for watching